Hey guys, happy Friday. Welcome back to Weld.com. So we had a user ask us if we could do some thin gauge stainless to thick stainless. So they specifically asked for 16 gauge to quarter inch plate. I don't have any quarter inch plate unfortunately right now. So we're gonna go ahead and step it up and run it on 3 8 plate. I do have some 16 gauge coupons. We're gonna do a lap joint and a T joint. So uh, typically with thinner gauge materials, you want more tacks. So I'm probably gonna go through, I'm definitely gonna tack all four of my corners and then probably attack in each middle one. The problem with welding thin material to thick material, or even thin to thin uh, in some cases, is if it's, heat's gonna move metal, okay? Especially with stainless steel, it has a low rate of thermal conductivity, so it's going to retain that heat for a lot longer instead of, you know, passing that heat off. Uh, so you can use chill blocks too, it's another thing. You can put copper blocks on there to pull some of the heat out of the thinner materials. Um, but I think we'll be fine. This, this big chunk of stainless underneath here should be you know, enough to be able to, to pull some of that heat out of the thinner part. You wanna keep all your heat concentrated on the thicker materials, not so much on the thin. Uh, you definitely wanna be melting the edge on the thinner part and you're just kinda washing that weld up against that, right? You're just tying into the edge of that material. We'll go ahead, uh, we'll do a lap joint and then we'll go ahead and pop a T-joint up here and show you guys how to do it. So let's get started. All right, so anytime we're dealing with thick to thin, I want to try to concentrate the majority of my heat on the thicker material. Okay, so you'll notice that when I was in there, I didn't maintain a 45 degree angle because I don't want equal heat on the thinner material. I want to kind of favor the, the thicker part and then just wash that weld. I'm just watching the toe of that weld, uh, or I'm just watching the, the edge of that puddle rather, you know, because that's going to be the toe of my weld once I'm done. And I just want to bring it right up there against that edge and just kind of maintain nice and consistent bead profile the whole way down. If it starts getting out of control, if it starts to open up on you, you get little gaps or anything like that, stop. Don't try to chase it, just stop. You can get you a little ball peen hammer, um, kind of flatten everything back out and put you a couple more tack welds in there and then you can get back at it. All right, so overall, turned out pretty good. I've got some nice uh, straw and rose colors in there. Got a little bit of purple in here, not what I was going for, but I, you know, um, I can hit that up with a, a wire brush and get rid of those oxides and we should be good. All right, so along this back edge right here, I'm gonna show you guys one of the most common mistakes and that's typically evolves around your work angle. So if my work angle gets too much towards the thinner material, uh, it's gonna start getting away from me. Puddle's gonna get excessively large. We'll see what happens. All right, so as you can see, it's still flowing. Everything's going along pretty nice, but you can see how that puddle's pushing way far up onto that thin, that top plate. I don't want that. I want to keep a nice, tiny, concise puddle just right up to the edge of that, uh, the top plate, the thinner material. And that just kind of reinforces the idea of why you want to keep your tungsten pointed towards the thicker material. It's going to help you dissipate a little bit more heat. It's going to give you a little bit more control of the puddle, and it's going to allow you not to erode so much of that material away on the, uh, the top thinner plate. Hey guys, guess what? It's Fired Friday again. So got some cool stuff to give away today. We got another encapsulated wire wheel for those of you who don't, don't like catching rogue wires to the gut while you're running the wire wheel. Got this guy right here. This one's pretty cool. We actually did a demo with this a while back. This goes, you can go straight from grinding a weld down to paint in one step. Um, so you just grind the weld down, it, it grinds it down, polishes it, and then you're ready for paint. And then this one right here is really good for getting into corners, whether you have to uh, contour the profile of a weld or you got to get into a hard to reach spot. Uh, Great for fillet welds or corner joints, T-joints. So all you have to do to win is go down to the comment section below and list a video that you guys would like to see that we haven't done yet. All right, so now we're gonna do a T-joint. I'm gonna go ahead and put a tack at each end. Instead of welding it you know, with uh, fusion welding or autogenous welding, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of filler metal to give uh, the thinner material a little bit more beef in there so I don't get sugaring on the backside or blow that corner out. All right, so very similar to the lap joint. I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna get a little bit more of my heat concentrated on the bottom plate. I'm just watching the edge of that puddle wash up onto that 16 gauge piece. Let's get into a little rhythm. Just relax. Think happy thoughts.
then re remember to stop at the end for your post flow. Let that post flow cycle cut off before you break away the torch. So you can see right here on the back, I got a small amount of sugaring. I'm not proud of it, but I want to show you guys that, you know, it happens. One thing I could have done to prevent that, one thing I might, you know, maybe consider doing next time, get you a piece of copper and you can put it up against the back. That way, if there is any additional heat or excess heat or the angle's off just a little bit, uh, as long as you get that in there nice and tight, keep that air out of there, that copper backing is gonna prevent you from getting any sugaring on the back because there's, there's no air in there as well as it's gonna start pulling that heat out. So uh, that's one thing you can do to alleviate that. I'm gonna show you now, we're gonna throw another piece on this side and kind of show you if my angle was improper, how much more sugaring you would actually get in that situation. Okay, so as you can see, I got more of that weld washing up on that vertical edge. That's what I don't want to happen. Okay, I don't need that much on there. I need a smaller fillet weld. But I still got a burn in that bottom plate, so I got to make sure I'm giving it adequate heat. All right, so this is the back side of the plate. You should be able to see that sugaring occurring in its natural environment. So that's the downside of it because I can't see it from this side, so I don't even know if it's occurring or not. I'm just welding along, minding my own business. Meanwhile, the backside is just getting torn up because I'm using the improper travel angle or work angle. All right, guys, hope that, uh, hope you guys were able to learn something from the video. Uh, viewer that requested that we do this, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. Hopefully this answers your question. If you guys have anything that you would like us to do, I know some of you guys want to see some flux core. We're working on uh, some of those videos soon. But if you guys have something specific you want to see, go ahead, drop it down in the comments. We'll put it to the list and we'll get to it as soon as we can. Until next time, make every well better than your last. All right, so this is the back side of the plate. You should be able to see that sugaring occurring in its natural environment. No, huh? you can't. Oh, <laughs> You're recording, right? While we're recording, you do that? That's not good, so I hurry up and did it. Think you're funny, don't you? Wanna play games? I got more games than Milton Bradley, mother. <laughs>